From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, everybody out in podcast land, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. My name is Peter Tischer, and next to me is Roger Charlton. Hello. Hi, Roger. We have done quite a few episodes now, and one of our most recent episodes was about idioms. And I would like to get into something even more serious than idioms, which is quotations. Yeah. That was something that was requested from us by a listener. And, well, maybe, Roger, could you maybe define what is a quotation? Well, strictly speaking, a quotation is something that someone said or wrote. And in order for it to be known, that someone would have to be famous. Right. So it's words by famous people yeah. that have in themselves become famous. And I think yeah. you brought along a list of quotations. So Well, I have a few examples. Uh-huh. Okay. I, the first thing, Could we hear a few? I think the first thing to say is all native speakers of English use quotations in their everyday talk, and they just don't realize their quotations. Ah, oh, is that uh, we, so? We've absorbed so much from two sources. One is the Bible. Uh-huh. And the other is Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> so when people say, escape with the skin of my teeth, Ooh. or uh, the salt of the earth. The so that's the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A law unto themselves. A what? law unto themselves. A law unto themselves. These, these are all very familiar phrases to native uh -huh. speakers. Okay. And they all originate in the Bible. Or Shakespeare. A lot of people would not realize when they say, for example, what's done cannot be undone. That's easy. That, okay. Th that's Hamlet. That's Hamlet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Or uh, wear my heart upon my sleeve comes I'm... from Othello. Uh-huh. So I... you see, there are, there are many, many phrases like this, which strictly speaking are quotations and just aren't recognized as such. Okay. Well, there's one that's very famous, of course, uh, to be or not oh, to right. be. That is even used in German and probably uh -huh. in many other languages. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's fascinating. Can we have some more? Well, I thought maybe I could quiz you. I have uh, a little list here. What do you mean, quiz me? Um, I'll read you a quotation and let's right. see if you recognize it. Meaning I have to say who said it? Who said it or who wrote it. Okay. Well, well okay. Okay. Go. Go. Yeah. To make it easy, I've started with a few recent ones. Okay. Meaning not from the last century or something. But <laughs> <laughs> no Shakespeare then. <laughs> right. Yes, we can. Ah, oh, that's an easy one. I think all of our listeners will say that's Barack Obama. Okay. Famous slogan from yeah. his campaign. So that's 2008. That's yeah. 2008. So and that's it's, but it's already become very famous and very yeah, much yeah. reused other, otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think lots of listeners will also recognize... I have a dream. I have a dream that is Martin Luther King. Right. In his famous speech on Capitol Hill. Yeah. 19, and that 1963? is 1963. Three. Three. Yeah. Ah, shoot, I would have said 65. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's dead, but oh, yeah, right. Okay. Now, listen to this one. The language sounds kind of antiquated, but this is another 20th century uh -huh. person. Uh -huh. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I know it, though. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's antiquated on purpose. And that is, again, an American president. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that would be Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy right. in his inauguration speech. Oh, well done. Um, summer beginning of the 60s? Exactly, 61. Ah, yeah, yeah. good, huh? <laughs> Elected in 60. And right. And, and, of course, on January 61, yeah. he did that speech. Yeah. Right. I don't think you'll know the next one. More British people would know this, I think. Yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> not waving, but drowning. This not, is from a poem. Not waving, but drowning. No. 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 Maybe you've heard of the author Stevie Smith? No, not even that. I'm you, sorry. You need to check her out. She's really entertaining. Is she? Yeah. Uh, but I don't even understand what the quotation means. You need to go to the poem. Anyone can Google or use any search engine, not waving, but drowning. But I think we have to promise our listeners that we will give the solution in the next podcast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <we'll do> <laughs> okay. Throw another one at me. Thinking about current television programs, Big Brother is watching you. 
Uh, yeah, but it's not from a television no. program. That would be um, um, 1984. Exactly. Written in 1948, I think. Published 49, yeah. Uh, and that would be George Orwell. And exactly, And that's the yeah. slogan by the dictator yeah. uh, of that fictitious yeah. country. So this one is actually written in block capital letters. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, what about this one, also for a German? An iron curtain has descended upon the continent. Well, it would have to be, of course, after the Second World War, because that's the yeah. iron curtain. Uh, I'd have to make an intelligent guess mm. on that one. Um, Churchill? Exactly. Sir Winston Churchill. Uh huh. When did he and say that? It's controversial. It's not clear whether he really invented this phrase, an iron curtain. Probably he didn't, but he made it famous. And this was in 1945. Okay. I, I think I know another quotation by Churchill, yeah. though. Isn't he the one who said, no sports, when he was asked how he managed to stay that healthy? There's something like that. Yes, you're right. And, and yeah. I think that has been requoted, you know, yeah. sort of, not as a general quotation, but as sort of a running joke, you know, how you... Well, you know, some quotations actually go down in the annals. They're in collections incorrectly. That is, some change has been made. People's right. memories are not reliable, or maybe it just doesn't sound quite right. Uh -huh. And so the misquotation becomes the quotation. Uh-huh. For example... Okay, hit me. Yeah. You know Blood, Sweat and Tears? The band? There was a band, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, of course, Blood, Sweat and Tears means, well, it refers to hard work or, right. or labor or anything like that. Yeah, you well, do this some... Is, this is kind of a misquotation. The original has blood, toil, tears and sweat. Ah, oh, okay. And um, that's... And, of course, toil would give it away, because to toil is hard work. Yeah. Oh, okay. And this is another Winston Churchill, a little earlier. This was a wartime speech. Is it? And I would have said that was much earlier. It sounds so old. <laughs> yeah, this is 1940. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so he was probably referring to the bomb war, the, you know, when, when London was bombed. And, um, oh, yeah. What, was yeah. what about this one? We're both instructors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He who can does... He who cannot teaches. <laughs> or does podcasts. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> and that goes back to 1903. Uh-huh. Okay. Could have been something, though, that you could find maybe in, in, in something in Dorian Gray, you know. By, uh, right. <laughs> I just have a couple more for you. Okay. The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but never jam today. Who feels hard done by here? The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday. But jam as in marmalade? Yeah, but never jam today. I don't know. Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> this is Lewis Carroll. Uh, Lewis Carroll, the author, yeah. um, who did... Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, but it's not Alice in Wonderland. It's not Alice in Wonderland. It's Wonderland. the other one. Through the Looking Glass. Oh, okay. So that's, that's 1872. But could you sort of interpret this for me? Well, someone's complaining that um, life is full of promises. It never seems to be right just now. It was okay yesterday. There's a promise it will be all right tomorrow or later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why isn't it right now? Okay, okay. It would have fitted, though, uh, into the other novel, too, you know, going down yeah. the yellow brick road, finding something you dream of. Exactly. Now, here's a good one to finish with. Okay. And so to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go now, don't worry, folks. Um, <laughs> and this is a whole lot older. And so to bed. And so to bed. That, of course, means, you know, we'll cap it off with yeah, this. Yeah. Could you give me a hint, a sort of... It's a diarist, someone who kept a diary which was published and is still published today. Must be British again. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm stumped. <laughs> right. This is Samuel Pepys. That's P-E-P-Y-S. And who is he? And he was alive in London at the time of the Great Fire of London that practically destroyed everything. 
Mm-hmm. And he was alive at the time of the Great Plague that killed so many Londoners. So they were interesting times, as you say. And did he, in his diaries, always finish off an entry by saying, and so to bed? Is Common, that... Commonly, yeah. Commonly, yeah. so... Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Well, you did pretty well on that quiz. Okay, thank you very much. But we still have to give our listeners the one that we didn't solve. So, right. folks, stay tuned and download the next episode where we'll go back again to some more famous quotations. Bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>